Hello scientists, today we're going to learn a little bit about waves. And that's why I'm sitting here in front of this piano, my piano, that has the covers removed here, um, so that you can see the strings below the piano and the strings above. We'll take a bigger look at the piano in just a second. We need to know for this lab that waves transmit energy. If I put some energy into the one of the strings, and the piano by pounding on one of the keys, that hammer behind the key transmits some energy to this string. Sound waves are mechanical waves, so are water waves. They need a medium to travel through. This chapter is also about electromagnetic waves. Uh, for example, your microwave uses electromagnetic waves and they don't need a medium to travel through. Sound waves travel through air and of course water waves would travel through water. The medium, in this case air for our sound waves here, you can hear the sound wave because energy is traveling in a waveform through the air which is the medium. Remember, electromagnetic waves don't need a medium. They can even travel through space. And when we talked about infrared energy, uh, when we talked about heat, we know that heat can travel through space in, in uh, radiant energy through infrared radiation. So let's talk about waves for a second. The amplitude of the wave is how tall it is. You measure it from the very, very top to the very, very bottom. The wavelength is how long a wave is. You measure it from top to top, or you can measure it from bottom to bottom, or if you measure it in the middle, you basically have to go through the middle three times. So there's different ways to measure a wavelength. Frequency is how often a waves come by. So if we were watching, say, on the beach, we were watching waves come by here. The frequency of this red wave here would be different than, say, the frequency of this purple wave. And if you want to know what that sounds like, this end of the keyboard would kind of look more like this. This end of the keyboard would look more like this because the energy created by these two different strings that the piano is using to create the sound is different. So the lowest frequency, the slowest waves are going to be right here. And they're measured in cycles per second how many waveforms, how many wavelengths travel by in one second. The period is the time for this amount of wave to go by for one wavelength. And so in three periods you'd see three waves here. What was the definition of period? Take a second, read the options, pause the video, if you guess the time for one wave to go by, you're absolutely right. Here, the strings that have the longest wavelength are emitting, uh, that have waves traveling in them that are the longest, are here. The shortest are going to be here. Generally, the, the tighter more tightly wound strings are going to produce higher frequencies and more frequent vibration. Oh, this picture is from the inside of a guitar. If you put your iPhone or an another device inside a guitar and shoot outwards, you can catch, uh, if you're shooting video, you can capture stuff that looks like this. So how would you measure the amplitude of these waves? If you said measure from the top to the bottom like this, you're absolutely correct. 
So let's head to the virtual lab here. If you open up Unit 7, go to 705, and click on the virtual lab, you'll end up with you'll end up with a lab that looks like this. And here we are in the lab. I've done a couple of things since I arrived in the virtual lab here. I've moved, you can move this slider back and forth. It originally starts here. And I've turned on the filter here in the oscilloscope. So let's see what a string sounds like when we pluck it with the clamp at the longest position. If your wave doesn't look like this, make sure you have the filter on. So let's pluck it again. Notice it's measuring the hertz right here. That's how many cycles per second, how many waves go by every second. If we make it much shorter here, we bring the clamp up to 15 and we pluck the string. You can see that the hertz here are going to be much different and it's going to sound much different. Check out what's going on in the real world in terms of string length with a real piano. Behind me is an upright piano and I've taken off the wooden panels that usually cover up the strings. Let's look at what we've got on an upright piano and test some of the things that we saw in the virtual lab. Here's a piano. Um, you can see the keys are down here. And there are some strings that start in the upper left hand corner. And they go all the way down across the piano down by the pedals. They're down here. They're the low strings on the keyboard on the left hand side. And some of the higher notes come from very tightly strong shorter strings on the right hand side of the piano. And they do head down, but they don't go as far down and as far across as the low strings. Here are the high strings. And you can see they vary in length depending on what note you're trying to hit. And here are the lower strings that come all the way across the piano. You can see that some of these are wrapped too, some of these piano strings, to make them thicker. So here's the lab report that we're working on. Make sure you get this from doc sharing, not the lesson. And write the goal of the lab that you're trying to answer. And we're really looking at how does the length of the string affect the pitch or the frequency, the cycles per second. So we're changing the length of the string and we're looking at how that affects the frequency or the cycles per second, the hertz. I've already written the if then because hypothesis here. If we change the length of the string, the frequency or the hertz, how often a waveform goes by every second, how many of those go by every second is called the hertz because shorter strings make higher frequency sounds. They vibrate more quickly. So let's use the data from your experiment to complete the table. I already did the first one for you. The length of the string was 15 centimeters as measured on the ruler and I recorded the frequency. Let's do 18 together. Here we are in the virtual lab and I can move the clamp to 18 centimeters right here. There you can see it right there. So move the clamp right to 18. Pluck the string. Have to hit exactly on that red dot. And then note the hertz, 387.5. Let's watch the video camera too. So that's vibrating a little bit more slowly than it did at 15. 
So we saw the hertz on the oscilloscope and we read 387.5 hertz on the oscilloscope. And so you can finish filling in the data on this table, move that clamp to adjust the length of the string and then record the frequency you see on that under the green waveform where it says hertz or hz. So now it's time to graph your data. At 15 centimeters, the length of the string da is down here. At 15 centimeters, we saw 440 hertz. So I'm going to travel up to 400. And then I look at the lines here, and I know that there are five spaces between 400 and 500. So I know that each block represents 20. So this is 420 right here and this is 440 right here. So I make a dot about right here. Our second point was at 18, and I know halfway between 15 and 20 is 17 and a half, so 18 is going to be about right here. And then the hertz, what we saw on the oscilloscope, is going to be 387. So this line is 380, and 387 is about right here. So our second point is going to be about right here. You can fill in the rest of the data table, and when you have the rest of the data, you can fill out the rest of the graph. So draw a best fit or trend line and predict the frequency with a string length of 10 centimeters. Now you can't actually do that in the lab. You can't go down to 10 centimeters, but you can extend the line that you created on your graph to make a good estimate of what things are going to look like at 10 centimeters. Do you think the, the frequency is going to get higher as the string gets shorter? Or do you think the frequency will get lower as the string gets even shorter? And then make sure you use your data to support your hypothesis or refute your hypothesis. You don't prove your hypothesis is correct. We don't prove hypotheses. We either support them with specific data like the number of hertz increased or decreased and you can use a specific data point um, but don't say I'm right or I'm correct the data supported my correct hypothesis be specific and use the word supported not correct um, thank you so much for coming to lab Here's what's actually going on in a piano or a violin or a stringed instrument. There are standing waves. A disturbance is set up in the string. It goes to the end of the string and it's reflected in the string. And eventually you get a wave that's coming back and going forward at the same speed. Standing waves are a little bit like light. Light can be reflected. You've all seen a scene something like this or you've looked in a mirror, that's a reflection of light as well. And standing waves within a piano or another stringed instrument are sort of the same idea. Let the, the energy is being reflected in the string. And that's what we just learned about, standing waves. Thanks for coming.